understanding ratio notation. You have to pay close attention to the order of what they're asking when they ask you to write a ratio. There's two types of ratios. There's part to part and part to whole. One word that always represents part to whole is when we use the word fraction. A part to whole ratio, for example, what is the fraction of unshaded sections, means you want to write how many are unshaded out of the total. When they say fraction, you know the denominator is going to represent the total number, in this case of sections, the total number of sections. In the other examples here, in this example, what is the ratio of unshaded sections to shaded sections? Order matters. This is going to be top. This is going to be bottom. You can also write a ratio in, in just something to something. So this would come first, and this would come second. So the order matters. So we can count here and see that we have one shaded section. One, two, three, four, five. Five unshaded sections, which gives me six total sections. That will be the information we can use to write these ratios. So what is the ratio of unshaded to shaded? Five to one. It can also be written with a colon five to one. What is the fraction of unshaded sections? That's how many are unshaded out of the total. Again, a fraction is always going to be a part to whole ratio. What is the ratio of shaded to unshaded? One to five. What is the fraction of shaded sections? One shaded section out of six total. And I knew to do a total in the denominator because they said fraction. So you have to be careful because there's lots of days, ways to represent the same diagram or the same scenario with different ratios. In this example, Isaiah brought two dozen donuts to a class party. Two dozen. Two dozen means that we have a total of 24 donuts because there are 12 dozen, 12 donuts in one dozen. So two times 12 is 24. So that represents our total. Half of the donuts had vanilla with sprinkles. Half of 24 is 12. Two had strawberry with cream filling. And the rest had chocolate frosting with sprinkles. So if we had 12 plus 2 is 14, how many of the total is remaining? 24 minus 14 is 10. Knowing that, you can now answer any questions about ratios part to part or fractions part to whole. What fraction of the donuts have sprinkles? Well, you would see how many have sprinkles out of the total. Here, I'm asking what fraction of the donuts did not have sprinkles. The only ones that did not have sprinkles were the strawberry with cream filling. So that would be two out of Again, fraction means total 24. So 2 out of 24 did not have sprinkles. A ratio can also give you other information that they don't tell you. For example, here, Justin and Desiree each wrote a ratio comparing the number of students and tables in their classroom. There are six tables in the room with four students at each table. 
So could we determine how many students are in the room? Sure, we can say six tables and each table has four students. So six times four is 24. There are 24 total students. And just reading the problem gave me that information because they told me how many tables and how many students at each table. Justin states that the ratio is four to one. Well, what would the one represent? Well, here we have four to one, four students at each one table. So Justin is probably saying that there are four students per table, so four students to one table. Desiree insists that the ratio is 24 to six. Well, where did Desiree get 24? We already used the information that we have to get 24. So could 24 represent the total number of students and six tables in the room? So instead of writing the ratio as how many per table, Desiree is writing the ratio as total number of students to total number of tables. So again here, they're using students to tables as their ratio. And, and they're using two separate ratios than what you would just uh, immediately come up with from the problem. So there's lots of different ways to read and interpret the problem and come up with a ratio. There are four students at each table. That's a ratio itself, four to one. There are 24 students for six tables. That's an equivalent ratio. It's just not in simplest form. It's telling you the total number of students to the total number of tables. So they're actually both correct because Desiree is comparing total number of students to the total number of tables. So that does make sense because there are 24 students and there are six tables. While Justin's is equivalent but simplified to students per table, which also makes sense because they did tell me there are four students for one table.